So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So, bro, what is <laughs> what does it say about you when you're too evil for prison? Like, that's crazy. I mean, you would think prison should solve the problem. Isolation, you got people telling you when to eat, telling you when to go to sleep, hard labor, low wages, you know what I mean? Limited time with your family. Like this video here is the top 10 real people that are too evil for prison. You know what I'm saying? I was watching, um, I was about to say first 48, but not first 48, but um, 60 days in. I was watching 60 Days In, and they mentioned on there in some prisons, they have you your shirt like color coordinated for the people who have committed murders. They wear this color shirt and other crimes and, and stuff like that. They wear this particular color. So they like single you out. And then for some, the crazy people are in a constant lockdown. Like the ones even crazier than that are in a constant lockdown. Because they show this one this one prison with this woman's prison. And the girl was, she she stayed in, she was locked down in her room pretty much 23 hours of the day. Like, that would drive you insane. You know what I mean? You know how it feels to not leave the house for a while and feel like the walls are caving in that you need to get out and do something? Imagine that, but you can't. You know, when you're in the comfort of your home, home all you got to do is get in your vehicle and go somewhere when you're feeling like that. There you can't. That would drive me insane. So, a shout out to most amazing top 10 videos. We're going to check out this video. If you're new to the channel, man, hit the subscribe button. Join the fam. And, uh, yeah, let's check this out. From prisoners spending the rest of their lives in solitary confinement to others who managed to escape prison multiple times. Let's look at this and more as we talk about some notorious criminals that are far too evil for prison. Starting off this countdown, we have Nikolai Zumagalia. This guy is so- Like some people by their name, you could just sense that they've just done something so horrible, so horrendous. The name Nikolai, I don't know why that, that just sounds like hitman to me. Like Nikolai is like the go-to hitman. So evil that it's hard to believe what he did was real. So Nikolai is a Soviet serial killer who took the lives of at least 10 people in the 1980s. He would target women and would often ax them to death, after in which he would eat them. In oh, fact, he was- Wasn't expecting to hear that. Huh? How do you develop a taste for human? Where do you pick that, that taste up? Huh? Curiosity? Wonder what a human taste, no, I don't want to know what a human tastes like. Comfortable eating the food that's in my fridge. Often ax them to death, after in which he would eat them. In fact, he was given the name Metal Fang because he had false teeth made from white metal. That way, it was easier for him to be able to eat into the flesh. In the late 1980s, he was caught after having one of his friends over, and the friend found a human head and intestines inside of his fridge. After that, he was arrested and tried, but declared insane. In 1989, when he was transported to another facility, Nikolai actually escaped and was on the run for two years. Thankfully, he was caught and re-institutionalized. But in December of 2016, he escaped again. But officials refused to confirm the claim. Either way, be careful around this guy. Like, he might try and escape for the third time. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, I thought she was about to say, be careful, look out for this guy. He's still on the loose. And I was about to go and double and triple check my doors and windows and make sure everything is locked and make sure my guard dogs are close enough to, I can just release them, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whew, threw me off with that one. At number nine, we have Alan Leger. Alan Leger is a Canadian serial killer who on June 21st of 1986, entered a convenience store in Black River Bridge, New Brunswick with two other accomplices and robbed the joint. While doing so, they beat the store owner to death, but they were later caught and arrested. He was given a life sentence and sent to prison. However, in 1989, he managed to escape and was on the run for seven months. During this time, he killed four more innocent people. He also committed arson and a list of other crimes as well. Eventually, he was recaptured and is now spending the rest of his life in Canada's maximum security special handling unit. Okay, bro, we're, we're two in already and both of them have escaped. One of them escaped twice. So, 
is it too lax in a prison? Is it too relaxed? And now as I'm going through my head, the main issue I saw in the prison is that, is that they don't have enough guards. Like, they don't have enough police officers. It was like one police officer to like 30 inmates. That's That was not enough. So I could see how they could kind of slip off to the side and run out a door or snatch a guard, snatch his keys, or because they was all behind his desk and his personal space. Moving on to number eight, we have Rodney Halbauer. Ever since Rodney was young, he has been committing crimes. It started when he was only 16 years old. During his younger years, he was arrested and released on parole a number of times. But when released, he would commit more crimes, like theft. In 1975, Rodney was released on bail after taking advantage of a Las Vegas blackjack dealer. But while on bail, he took advantage of and killed six other women and received a life sentence. However, in 1977, he actually escaped jail and kidnapped his own daughter. Shortly after, he was recaptured only to escape again in 1986. While on the run, he stabbed and injured another woman. Thankfully, once again, he was recaptured. When you think after the first time they would keep a closer eye on him? I guess not. In our seventh spot, we have- It's three people, bro. Three people done escaped out of this list. Like, you would think top priority in a prison is to keep the prisoners inside. Why are they there? Some of them are there for murder. So if they escape, they're going to possibly do it again. So that should be top priority. Sheesh. Uh, Thomas Silverstein. Now this dude is said to be one of the most dangerous prisoners of all time and the most violent prisoner in America. He was first jailed in 1978 for armed robbery. While in jail, he killed a prison officer and two inmates. He also was the leader for the Aryan Brotherhood prison gang for quite some time. This prison gang is the largest and deadliest prison gang in the US with an estimated 20,000 members inside the prison and on the street. Because of how many people he killed and injured in prison, Silverstein got transferred to a federal prison in Atlanta. There he was confined in a six by seven foot cell. He was under 24 hour surveillance. In fact, the lights in his cell were never turned off so that they could always watch him. Silverstein eventually died in prison at the age of 67. And I've heard of that though. I've heard of the different gangs that are inside of the prisons and man, oh man, bro. They pretty much run the prisons. They run the prisons. The guards are so afraid of them that they be they they have the guards doing stuff for them. You know what I mean? Doing little favors and different things for them like that. Like I've heard of these different gangs, and to hear he was the head of that one, bro. And, and what you'll see is those gangs, those little cliques. You know how you have your like your little high school cliques? It be like that in the prison system according to a lot of those documentaries I've seen. It's crazy. In our sixth spot today, we have Victor Figueroa. On February 6, 1997, Victor Figueroa managed to escape a Moroa shock incarceration facility in Mineville, New York. Victor had been serving a one to four year sentence for drug possession, but decided to take his chances and flee. When authorities noticed that he was missing, they searched the area, but all the leads ran cold. He has not been seen or heard from since. In fact, he's the only New York state prison inmate to escape and never be found. Either he's still out there or he died while trying to escape. Either way, it's a bit scary thinking that he could potentially still be out there. We are now at our fifth and halfway. Lock your doors now. Go ahead. Because I just, the minds are locked. Lock your windows too. Go ahead, pause the video. Go do that. Some of y'all never pause the video when I tell you to pause the video, but this right now would be a perfect time to pause the video. Okay? And make sure you're safe and secure. They don't even know if this dude is alive or dead and never been found different either way it's a bit scary thinking that he could potentially still be out there we are now at our fifth and halfway mark with james eddie diggs to the public james eddie diggs seemed like a top-notch citizen he seemed to be a great family man with a happy wife and two young sons however in the morning of may 26 1949 he shot and killed his wife and kids before mm. disappearing forever police did manage to find him a week later but he managed to escape the officer by shooting him in the face and killing him he since fled into the woods and hasn't been caught 
not since. In fact, he was one of the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives for the longest time, but he was eventually removed from the list in 1961 and is said to be dead by now. In our fourth spot- Yeah, because if you read this, I was looking right to see where he was born. <laughs> Age at the time was 36, born May 29th, 1913, Morven, North Carolina. Salute to all my Carolina family, but uh, whew, I would have had y'all on high alert, bro. I'd have been like, look for this dude, because it gives his, his other description. I'd have been like, look for this dude, height, six foot, weight, 165 pound, build, slender, hair black, eyes brown, complexion, dark brown, race, black, Nationality, uh, American, education, 11th grade, occupations, aircraft. This dude was an aircraft mechanic, a chauffeur and porter. Characteristics, wears mustache and glasses, space between upper front teeth. They even told you about his gap, <laughs> right? Upper front tooth gold. He had a gold tooth. So, but... He, yeah, he's more than likely not with us anymore. He was eventually removed from the list in 1961 Ooh. and is said to be dead by now. In our fourth spot, we have Robert Maudsley. Robert Maudsley is considered Britain's most dangerous prisoner, and you're about to find out why. In 1974, Maudsley was arrested for taking advantage of young individuals. But during his trial, he was found unfit and was sent to Broadmoor Hospital instead of a prison. While there, Maudsley and another patient locked themselves in a cell with another patient and held him hostage. While there, they tortured him to death over a period of nine hours. After this incident, he was convicted of manslaughter and was sent to Wakefield Prison. And there, he killed three inmates, after which he got placed in solitary confinement and spends his life in a glass cell underneath Wakefield Jail. Why they ain't put him in a cell by... Like, hold on, I, let me make sure. A lot of times I don't be hearing correctly. Let me go back. A period of nine hours. After this incident, he was convicted of manslaughter and was sent to Wakefield Prison. And there, he killed three inmates. So why was he allowed to be around other inmates after he just tortured one? Like, it's not right. I, maybe I'm just like... What I'm saying is is super complicated or complex. Maybe that's what it is. Because I would think it's not right because science. He's just tortured somebody. He doesn't need to be around people. How about we isolate him? You know what I'm saying? How about that? After he's already shown us that. Like they seen in, in, in the little kitty school. He doesn't play. Remember they used to put on your report card. Doesn't play nice with others when you get in trouble a lot. I think that should have went on his report, his report card, his prison report card. Maybe we need prison report cards now or something like that. But maybe that's what needed to go on his, because clearly this dude, he, he didn't play nice with others. After which he got placed in solitary confinement and spends his life in a glass cell underneath Wakefield Jail. In our third spot, we have George Edward Wright. In 1962, George Edward Wright was convicted for murder and was sentenced to up to 30 years in prison. Wright and three other men went on a spree of armed robbery, one in which they shot a man and took off with his money, which was only $70. So was it really worth it? Anyways, they were caught and put into jail. But then in 1970, Wright managed to escape from a prison in New Jersey. He was caught and locked up once again, only to escape once more in 1972. This time, he made sure he was never going to be caught again. So he came up with a plan. This plan involved hijacking a Delta Airlines flight and collecting ransom for the release of the passengers. Upon doing so, they flew the plane to Portugal. In 2011, the police caught up with him in Portugal, but since Portugal has no extradition treaty with the United States, Wright was released. He remains a fugitive to this day. Coming in at number two, we have- This dude out smart, oh my good. I feel like we shouldn't even let that type of information get out. But a lot of people already know that. That's why they be trying to flee and they be trying to catch him before they flee. You know what I mean? Or they be like, yo, he's a potential flight risk. Let's not, you know what I mean? Let's not let him get away. That dude, wow. Have Eric Rudolph. In 1996, Eric Rudolph bombed Atlanta's Centennial Olympic Park during the oh. Summer Games. As a result, two in- I remember that. What was that movie? It was a movie or a documentary or something on Netflix that actually showed that, bro. I used to live in that area, not before that, to, after that took place. And I didn't even know that had taken place over there. It wasn't until this past year that I watched that and knew that 
all that information about that because I was super young when that took place. But that was crazy because they didn't trust that security guard, remember? Off bombed Atlanta's Centennial Olympic Park during the summer games. As a result, two individuals were killed and over 100 were injured. But that was just the beginning of his deadly bombing spree. He pulled off three more bombings, injuring hundreds more. For five years, the police were on a hunt for Eric. At one point, he was one of the top 10 fugitives on the FBI's list. It wasn't until 2003 that Eric got arrested. Turns out that he was hiding in the mountains for five years. Being a skilled outdoorsman, this helped him greatly. When he was caught, he pled guilty to all four bombings and was given four life sentences without the possibility of parole. Because wasn't his bombs like the one that sent like the shrapnel everywhere? I think that's what it was. And that security guard that they were accusing of possibly, of possibly doing that. Remember that whole, like if, if I find out, I'll let y'all know what that show was on Netflix, but I'm pretty sure somebody who already seen it, thought about it, is already putting it in the comment section, man. If you haven't gone and seen, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Go check it out. It'll blow your mind away if you haven't seen it. Now spending the rest of his life in the super prison in Florence, Colorado. And in our number one spot today, we have Santiago Maduros. In 2010, Santiago fired into a random person's car because one of the passengers was wearing the wrong color jacket. The victim had no ties to any gang. He was just an innocent person riding in his sister's car. He was severely injured and his sister was unfortunately killed. A couple weeks later, Santiago and some of his friends were robbing a car. And when a group of men tried to stop them, he shot at them as well. Well, he killed a random person that was just the wrong place at the wrong time. From there, he was on the run for about a decade. He was finally caught in 2020 in Mexico. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. If you like this video, be- What's crazy about that is I was just telling my son uh, two days yesterday or day before yesterday. And I was telling him because he was like, we were riding somewhere and he turned around and he did this, this like, it looked like a gang sign with his hand. And he was like, that's what they doing on TikTok, dad. And I was like, don't do that no more. And he was like, wow, that's what everybody's doing on TikTok. I was like, that's that's all cool and fun. I said, but there's there was a time and there still are places that take that type of stuff very seriously. You know, you could throw up a sign that you think is just being funny and you be in somebody's neighborhood where that's, that sign could be a disrespect to them. And they'll they'll shoot. They'll They'll come at you. They'll, you know what I mean? you'll lose your life behind it. I said, and then I started telling him about, you know, Crips and Bloods, you know, wearing red and wearing blue in certain neighborhoods, how it was back in the days and how it was over there in LA and different things like that. And his eyes just was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, you gotta be aware of certain things. You know, we have y'all in this bubble and y'all don't know, but I would be doing you a disservice and I would be doing my my job as a parent to tell you by not telling you that that could offend somebody, which shouldn't be the case, but you have to think about that and think about things like that. That could offend somebody and then you could be in a whole world of trouble. I was like, so don't be doing that. Don't be throwing up signs. You don't know what that type of stuff. What's wrong with just a simple peace? Hey, pops, peace or thumbs up. Keep it simple. Don't be doing stuff you see other people doing online and you don't know what that type of stuff means. You know what I'm saying? That that could get you in a world of trouble. So he was like, whoa, like I didn't know. And that's, are you serious? I was like, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna school him on the whole, you know, Bloods and Crips and show him one of them documentaries of, of that type of stuff and how serious that stuff was back then. That stuff was serious, you know what I'm saying? And it could possibly still be that place that way in some areas. You never know. So I don't play around with that. And I was telling him the same thing. Don't play around with that. But this is crazy, man. I think the main thing we, we took from this video is if you think a prisoner won't escape, then you you're think again, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. How many people in these out of this top 10 list actually escaped? That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. Police putting a guy back around prisoners after he just assaulted and tortured one was crazy to me. But it just goes to show you, man, they don't they don't be thinking in there. That's why I always say, like, prison is supposed to be somewhere where they go and get rehabilitated. 
watching some of them shows like 60 Days In, they're not in there rehabilitating. It's like a party going on in there. Only thing is they don't go home. You know what I mean? They get they get drugs in there. They get weapons in there. They get all kind of different things in there. They got cable. They got TV. They get the commissary. They get and I've seen cell phones. I've seen um, tablets. Different they, all kind of stuff in there, bro. So uh, I, I don't know. Y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this video, bro. Top ten real people that are too evil for prison. It's your boy up till the next one. I'm gone, man. Peace.